Today we are replacing the cooling system on a Dometic 8 cubic foot RV fridge. Our model number ARCLWD82 adapts to Dometic fridge models RM2800, RM2801, RM2802, and RM2803, RM2810, RM3800, RM3801, RM3802, RM3804. So let's get started. Before we get started in our cooling unit removal and replacement, here are the tools we're going to require to do the job. First of all, we have a ball peen hammer, a cordless drill, a can of penetrating fluid, a Phillips screwdriver or Phillips bit, a 5 16 bit, a curved screwdriver, a small pair of needle nose pliers, a small crescent wrench, side cutter pliers, needle nose pliers, a level, a putty knife, a Zacto knife, a tube that comes with the cooling unit, it's the heat conductive thermal mastic, you'll have that with the unit, a 7 inch 2 by 4, a 4 and a half inch 1 by 3, and a 4 by 4 steel plate of, of about a quarter inch thickness will be fine, a roll of electrical tape and a large crescent wrench and of course a caulking gun from the thermal mastic. So with those tools on hand that's everything that would be required to do a change out on a refrigerator. Alright we're about to install a 3801 cooling unit in this older style motorhome. We have to do it on the inside because the fridge won't come out of the motorhome in this older one. But that's not going to be a problem. It'll take about 90 minutes to, to do, and so let's get started with that. Prior to doing any work on the outside of your fridge, you want to make sure you locate the propane source of the motorhome. It's behind a panel. On this particular motorhome, it's located here. You're going to open up the access door. You're going to find a big tap valve. You're going to make sure you turn that clockwise to the right as far as it'll go. And that ensures your propane gas is off before you do the job. That's for safety. Always have that turned off. The next step is we're going to remove the refrigerator from the motorhome. Now, it's a very simple thing to do. There's some holding screws here in the front of the fridge that we have to remove. So let's get started on that. You're going to open up the door of the fridge. And you're going to see some decorative little plastic plugs that are hiding the screws on this fridge here. So you're going to just take a little knife and work those little things off and pop them out of there. Like so. And inside there is a Robertson screw. It may be a Phillips, but in this case it's a Robertson. There's one there. There's one further down below on the unit. Right here down below. So you're going to take these and save these little plastic caps because you can put them back in place and cover the screws later. After removing these two screws on the side of the fridge here, the next step will be we're going to remove the eyebrow. There's a Phillips screw underneath each end of the eyebrow. One there and one over here. And you're going to just get that out of the off of there. Now that we've taken the eyebrow screws off, we're going to lift the eyebrow up and there's two holes underneath here. And normally there's a couple of screws. But in this case, there's no screws here. They forgot to put them in that the last time they repaired the fridge, so we don't have to worry about those two screws. Next step, we're going to lift the eyebrow up, and there's going to be we're going to remove the upper door of the fridge. There's a pin right here, and it unscrews counterclockwise, and you unscrew that, and it'll allow you to remove the upper door of the fridge. So you swing the fridge back, and it's on a pin on the bottom here. So top things out and then you give that a little tap and that comes off. There we go. Top doors removed. Now that we've removed the top freezer door with the crescent wrench, we're going to remove the bottom door with the crescent wrench. We're going to turn this pin here, loosen this pin off, and then that door, you sometimes you can grab it, take a little bit, you're going to screw this pin and it's going to allow you to take the bottom door off. 
easily just by screwing that out like so. Remove the pin and the bottom door will be removed. Now that we've removed the eyebrow, we're going to take the little decorative cover off on this side and there's a screw under here and there's one back here and we're going to remove those two screws as well. Now that we have the doors off, this particular fridge has a plastic slide lock here. I, remove, I recommend removing this because it can hit up against something and break quite easily. So there's just two Phillips screws, one here on the corner of it and one underneath. And I like to remove those because they're very fragile. The next step, we're going to remove the 12 volt wires and wiring to the fridge. Now this is an older style fridge. It has an electrical block here and inside each one of these circles is a flat tip screw. You're going to put your screwdriver in. Now the red wire is the positive, white wire is the negative, two ignition lock wires. You're going to put your screwdriver in the hole. Now be careful on this bottom thing you don't take your screwdriver and have it touch against any steel while you're doing this because you would blow a fuse in the motorhome. Once you've loosened off that screw in there, remove the red wire. This is the live 12 volt and you want to have it taped up so it can't touch anything and blow a fuse. So cover that up with some tape and that protects that wire. These two wires here are your negative. Pull it out of the block and your two ignition wires out of the block. Now the older motorhomes had ignition lock wires. Yours probably doesn't have one if it's not an old old motorhome. So, but these are no power right now to them, so don't worry about them, just tuck them up out of the way. After we removed our 12 volt wires, we have an electrical 120 volt AC plug here. You're going to unplug this from the fridge. The fridge, this AC plug only powers up the electric elements so the fridge will run on electric. It has nothing to do with the lights inside the fridge, the lights on the board, all of that is 12 volt. This is just for the 110 electric elements in the fridge so it'll work on electricity. The next step is to remove your propane line. The propane line goes into a little junction box which is right there. You want to secure this whole system here when you're twisting the flare nut off. So, so you put a pair of pliers on the bl block or another adjustable. In this case, I've got some pliers here. You just can lock them on like so. All right, and then you can remove your flare nut and it's going to be on there pretty good. So, you know, it's been there for a while. So you hold them and then you lift up. Oh, there. It's going to be on there. So you, you'll have to use some strength. But we've got that one loose. So now you're going to remove it from the fridge. The next step, you're going to look at the feet of the fridge, the back of the fridge, and there's foot screws, I call them, that are in the back rails of the fridge. You're going to remove those screws holding the back rails of the fridge. Look for them. They could be up in the corner here somewhere, out of the way. Search them out and remove them. They're two little Phillips screws. Now, you unhook everything from the fridge. We should be prepared to give the fridge a shove from the outside here to get it started out of the cabinet on the inside of the motorhome. So usually I put my hands up in here and I usually give it a good big shove and it'll move forward. And then you can go in the motorhome and help your buddy shimmy it out of the cabinet. On some older models, not all, if after two or three attempts of removing, the, pushing the fridge out of the cabinet, doesn't want to move, it's still stuck in there. Some bottles you have to go to the roof vent remove the roof vent and there could be several brackets up um, on top of the fridge holding the top of the fridge into the motorhome. You'll have to remove them. Now that I've shoved the fridge some from the outside, it's come away from the cabinet. Now you're going to shimmy this fridge back and forth and you're going to walk it out of the cabinet. Now this is a good time to get yourself a friend. These fridges aren't really heavy but they're cumbersome. So you're going to need somebody to help you finish the job of removing this fridge out of the cabinet. You just keep shimmying it until it comes all the way up. This fridge is 25 inches wide. This door on this older style motorhome is only 23. 
uh, inches wide. You cannot remove this fridge from the motorhome. Now, one of the good things about having a cooling unit uh, change in your fridge is you don't have to have the fridge removed from the motorhome. The only way to have this fridge taken out of this motorhome would be to go out one of the windows, which would be an hour and a half labor to remove a window, an hour and a half labor to reinstall a window and the caulking and everything. So it's much pro less problematic to put a cooling unit in them and cheaper for installation. Okay, before you lay the fridge down to remove the cooling unit, you have to take the freezer plate off the freezer tubes. There are four bolts located on this freezer plate. There are five 16 inch bolts and nuts. You look underneath, you're going to have some rubber covers that are just protecting the bolt so you don't scratch yourself. Little plastic rubber covers. Remove those. Then you're going to take a wrench and a ratchet or whatever you have available and you're going to remove all four of those bolts out of this freezer plate. Okay, I'm free loosen them for us, but we're going to pop them out of here. Like so. And then when you remove this four bolts, the bottom part portion of the cover is going to come off. You're going to grab this and give it a hard yank. And that's going to slide off of the freezer tubes. And I'll put this stuff all aside. I'm going to move down to the bottom portion of the fridge. And you're going to look inside the fridge. And you're going to see a two Phillips screws holding this capillary tube for the thermostat on the fins. We're going to remove both of those screws and take this tube out of the way. After doing that, there's going to be four fin screws, three or four fin screws. Look in between the fins. There's one there, there's one there, and there's one there. We're going to remove those screws as well. So that, that'll prepare the cooling unit to come out of the fridge. Now we're going to remove some screws that are in between the fins here, holding that thermostat capillary tube to the fins. So you're going to back off these two screws that are in here, loosen them off, and pull the capillary tube down and away from the fins. Just like that. Treat this tube gingerly. You don't want to break it. Break it. Then you can take the other three big screws holding the fins on out of the fin. There's one. On this model, there's three screws. There's two, and one over here, which is three. Now that the screws have been removed from the fin section of the refrigerator, and we pull when we pull the cooling unit out, these fins may or may not come out with the cooling unit. It doesn't matter. Either way, it's fine. If they come out with it, that's great. If they don't come out, don't worry about it. I'll show you what to do in, a, uh, in the next video or two. This particular cooling system, and this... RV is 25 years old. It's a 3800 and it was built back in the 80s and when they built them, they built them tough back then. Good metal, thick metal. They built them to last the lifetime of an RV. Well, we pride ourselves at article refrigeration because we build our cooling units like they did back then. Thick and robust and we build them so that they will last the, last the lifetime of your RV. The first step in removing this cooling unit is to remove this burner air shield. It's held on with a bunch of Phillips screws. Remove those Phillips screws with a nice cordless screwdriver like I have here. You'll see on this model there's three screws. We're going to get those out of there. And we're going to set that shield up out of the way. Now we're going to remove the side air shield. A couple of screws right here. And there's going to be a bottom air shield that we remove. Get those out of the way. There's the side shield. And there's one screw back here for the back box shield. We're going to move that. Remove that. Actually, two screws. One right here. And we'll get them out of the way. There we are. They're out of the way. Next step is I'm going to remove the electrical covers here. Hiding our electronics. A couple of screws to remove that. Because we have to unplug some wiring under here. So we're going to gingerly move that up and out of our way. Now we're going to remove the electrical cover. And underneath here you're going to see a maze of wires. Don't let it worry you. They're plug and play. If you want to, you could take a piece of masking tape and number these wires and plugs. One, two, three, four, left to right, if it would help you out. 
they cannot plug in in a different spot. This one is like seven pins or whatever. It'll only fit there. So as you remove them, just pull them off and they come off very easily and you cannot put them in the wrong order because they won't fit. Now on this three-way fridge, we're gonna remove the plug here with our needle nose pliers. These two wires are for your 12 volt element. You don't have to remove them from the board here. You're gonna remove one from the element up here. It's clipped onto the element there. The other one for the 12 volt is right here and it unplugs off this block right there. At this juncture, I recommend for customers to remove their 12 volt electric heating element system from a fridge like this. It's an old system. It doesn't work good to begin with. And you'll only need your propane and your 120. You don't need a 12 volt system to operate a fridge. They're hard on the batteries. They're, it's an old technology. We're gonna show you how to remove that from the fridge. Now we're gonna get the electronic system out of our way to remove the cooling unit. There's going to be three screws, Phillips screws down in here that we're gonna remove. There's gonna be a Phillips screw down in here. And there's going to be two over at the end of this board holder. You're going to remove those Phillips screws. And then, just like magic, this whole system is going to pick up and come out, off the fridge out of your way. Just like that. We can set that aside and don't worry about it. For now. Next thing, we're going to remove the screw here and we're going to take the drip tray off. Set that aside. Now we're going to remove the cooling unit frame rail screws. There's one down here. There's one over here on the left side of the frame. And there's two up top. We're going to remove all those four. There we go. Now, you may see some tie wraps that are containing these wires to the unit cut those little tie wraps and pull these wires up out of your way because you want them out of your way when you remove the cooling unit simple as that this particular fridge has some tape some metal tape along the sides of it holding the edges of the cardboard behind the head you can use we it's not required when you put our cooling units back in we have a nice backing to ours and uh, you can if you want, but it's not necessary when you put the new one in to retape the unit. If the cooling unit doesn't come out easily, I'm going to show you what to do next. First thing you have to do is remove the heat stack system from the cooling unit. You're going to take this chimney protector off here, just two little tabs, it just slips on the pipe. And you're going to take this uh, cover off of here. All right, remove those two there. Then, if there, there's sometimes a cover down here, sometimes there's not. If there's no cover, don't worry about it. If there is a cover, you're gonna lift up on these little tabs here. There's four of them. You're gonna bend back the four tabs and remove the little cover that's inside the stack area here. Then with the covers removed, it allows you to squeeze the stack to remove it off of its little clips. You just squeeze and, and they'll come off. Alright. I gotta get on the other side for that. But. Over here. There, now we're going to open up the stack and you're going to see a bunch of insulation in there. What I usually do is I just take the stack and I roll it off and it comes off like that. If the insulation stays behind, it doesn't matter if we can put new insulation in there. But in your unit, the replacement unit you get, it's going to have the stack on it already. So you don't have to worry about this insulation. But I'm just taking this apart to show you how to remove a stubborn cooling unit. There. Now, another good point, always remove your baffle from your existing cooling unit. Comes out of the chimney stack, there's your baffle. 
This staff must be put in your new cooling unit or it won't work properly on propane. So don't forget the baffle in your new one. Okay, the cooling unit, we're saying if it's stubborn, it won't come out. You're going to take about an 8 inch piece of 2x4. You're going to place it here between the cooling unit chimney and make sure it's down below the head of the unit, the end of the 2x4. Place it there. Then you're going to take a pry bar, crowbar, long pry bar. You're going to get up underneath it here and you're going to pry downwards like that under this pipe here and it's going to pry the cooling unit loose from the fridge and you'll know when it breaks loose and then you'll have it loose and out of there it might take some time folks you may have to pry and pry and wiggle and pry because some of them have been in there for 25 years and they're stubborn coming out but don't give up just keep prying and it will come out okay on the original 3800s a lot of them had a steel plate down in here and it's not visual to see it you have to take a screwdriver and the, and the, the uh, backing of the fridge has to be peeled away like that and just keep picking away and if you take your screwdriver and poke around you'll feel the steel plate if you feel the steel plate it's probably this absorption coil clean up all the paper find two screws that are there Phillips screws and remove the two screws from the plate that'll be down out of sight in this area of the cooling unit and you have to get them out of there before you remove it okay now we're going to remove the cooling unit from the fridge and we'll see some of them come out very easily some don't so let's try this one. Oh, look at this one it's lifting out really easy now that you've got the cooling unit up, you're faced with your your depression here where your cooling unit head was what you want to do you're going to see some Maztec from the old unit you're going to take a putty knife and you're going to scrape that Maztec out and throw it away it doesn't have to be stick and stand spotless but you're going to get the bulk of all that Maztec out of there it won't hurt your hands it's just putty but you want to scrape those pins clean of that material while you're here you look around and if you have any big chunks of foam that have stuck in here from removing the other cooling unit could be a great big mound of foam that ripped off of the other unit we'll take a putty knife and cut that down so this is a flat area you want it nice and clean and flat of any leftover foam that came off the other unit so our unit fits in there nice and, and fine okay we've cleaned up this area now you're going to take your fins and if you want to you can put a mark saying up so that when you put these on your new cooling unit you'll have them positioned properly by lifting up on this fin system we're going to pull it out of here and we're going to put it aside because we're going to put it on your new cooling unit prior to you installing the new cooling unit your arctic cold cooling unit will arrive to you in a big box you're going to take it out of the big box inside you'll see the cooling unit you'll see a full set of instructions and warranty papers attached to the cooling unit you will see a bag of hardware required to reassemble the new cooling unit onto the fridge and you'll also get a tube of heat condensing thermal Maztec which is applied to the pipes prior to installation you're going to receive your tube of Maztec now we're going to Maztec the cooling unit prior to installation get yourself a caulking gun and all you're going to do is put a bead of this Maztec on the pipes all right about a 1 8 bead all the way down to the pipe. Now that we've mastered the cooling unit, we're going to attach the fin system to the head of the cooling unit. So I've taken a wire, a small coat hanger, whatever you have available, and I've lined up my hole on the left of the fins here, in there, and now that I get that lined up, I'm going to line up this hole, and I'm just going to find it by lifting up the fins a little bit. And you just take your time with this, and you'll find it. I'm just going to line it up that way like so and I'm going to screw it in now I'm not screwing it in all the way I'm just going to do it halfway keep it loose because I want to line up this one if this is real tight I can't wiggle around here to get this one lined up so I want to keep it loose and line this one up so I'm going to get another screw and put it in this side once I've got the two lined up then I can cinch this one down not like tighten it here a little bit tighten it here a little bit back and forth until you get it all tightened down good Now, I wind this one up, I finished tightening up this side a little bit, 
I'm going to go back and forth here now on both these screws, tightening both up a little bit at a time until I cinch it down nice and snug. There, so the fin system is on. Now, if you see these fins are separated a bit, don't worry about that. Just bend them back and forth and space them out just by your fingers. They don't have to be perfect. So don't worry if they're out of shape a little bit. Just twig them around back and forth with your hands. Do it gingerly, okay? And just go easy back and forth and spread them out. There. And now we're ready to put this cooling oil back, turn it over and put it back into the fridge. Now we're going to flip the cooling unit over and we're going to install it into the fridge. So I'm just going to turn it over like this and we're going to line it up and get it down in there. And there it goes into the fridge. Okay, there it is. Just push it down and it's going to be a snug fit. And you just keep snugging it down in there until it's down. If you want to take a piece of wood or something and just keep pushing it down in make it go in as far as it will into the box and if it doesn't go 100% all the way down don't worry about that because it doesn't have to be 100% down just as far down as you can get it all right and going a little bit at a time and that's all great okay. Now, we've got the unit almost all the way in. Now, it might be up a little high on one side or the other. So what you can do is take a block of wood and just give it little love taps here and there to try to help it seat itself all the way down. Just like that. All right, wherever you can get the block of wood on, just give it a little tap and it'll just push that foam block a little further down into the floor. All right, wherever you, you convince it a little bit further, that's all wonderful. Just like that, and we're just about home free. There we are. We're all the way in there now. With the new element in there, or your used element, and then there's a door here that goes on. And uh, that'll do up your stack. Now, while I'm talking to you about stacks, here's our trusty bath that you took out of your old cooling unit. This baffle is very important. Comes out of your old cooling unit and goes in this one. Alright, take it. It goes in the end of the chimney. Slip it down. All the way in. And it'll just stop as far as it'll go. It's at a right angle. It can't go any further. Alright, then you're going to see your little chimney cover. You're going to take your chimney cover. Put it over that. That's just a downdraft chimney cover. And there. Turn it maybe this way so it's there. That's done there. Don't forget that baffle, ladies and gentlemen. Now we're finishing up the heat stack. We're going to take our element door, we call it. Flip it back into the stack. Close it up on it. And that's just a door to access your, cool, your, your element when you need it. So that's done. And now we're going to take our hold down bolts. That's supplied with, you, with your cooling unit. And we're going to cinch down and fasten the cooling unit down to the fridge so it's secure to the fridge at this point. We're going to take our nut driver, 516 nut driver, and we're going to go over to here. Now, if you get over here and you see that the cooling unit is not exactly over the hole, just pull the cooling unit over where you need it to be to line it up. It won't hurt it, won't bust it. Line it up so the hole is there and cinch down your unit on the bottom. The same as the top. If you've got to push or pull or tweak the unit one way or the other, don't worry about that. That's acceptable. Okay, now get the unit fastened into the fridge. Now we're going to put our burner assembly, electronic assembly, back in the place where it belongs. And you can see the marks where it used to be. So it's easy to find out where it was. <laughs> All right, so we lay it down in there. And we're going to find a spot for it that it fits. All right, now, you're going to see that your burner here is over top of, uh, uh, your burner's over, over the chimney, and you're going to see three little holes in here. See the three, I'll show you. See these three holes here? We supply you screws for those three holes to hold this burner. So this burner's going to go down in like that. All right, and we're going to put three screws in there. They're short little stubbies. Do not put sharp sheet metal screws there. Just 
short stubby burner screws and I'll show you what they look like they're just small little green screws here's the burner screw important to just use that there no sharp sheet metal screw green burner screw three of them we've, we've put in our three burner screws got our burner secured now we're going to refasten our electronic board with our screws that we took out reuse the screws that were there no problem. get yourself a nice little drill and we'll fasten that back in where it was bingo we're back in there with our electronic board you can see I have not put in the 12 volt heating element just the 110 20 heating element what I have left over is a ground wire for that element that's not there just take it and pull it off of that block and get rid of it so we now have just a two-way fridge 120 and propane don't worry you don't need the 12 volt heating system to work on this fridge don't use it I don't recommend it here's our wiring that we had removed earlier prior to putting the cooling unit out so take your wiring harnesses shove them down through the pipes whichever way you can get them down through there I just snake them down there okay get them down to the bottom here and uh, you're gonna pull them out like so and we're gonna be plugging them in back into the box like we did earlier and again remember I told you earlier you cannot go wrong with these plug-ins they'll only go one way so if we look at our first plug all right it's quite a long plug well we only have one real long prong outlet there so that's got to go there so take your time line it up and plug it on that's it the next one we're going to look we're going to see this one oh that's um let's see that's a one two three four five six seven prong so this is a seven prong oh line it up plug it on it's there oh now look folks i missed it see look i'm missing one prong there pull it off and make sure we plug it in properly there i'm on there properly and there's a little groove here in the electrical box for these wires to go through see the little groove here they're going to lay in there we've got this four pronger so we got a little four pronger way over here snake it up wherever you have to and get it plugged in all right snake them up in through there and he plugs in steady hand always helps there's that one and we have one more and it's obviously got to go here so don't be scared of this electrical box it's nothing to be afraid of it's plug and play you got nothing to go wrong now the only other thing we have to plug back in here is our 120 element and it's a no-brainer two prongs it goes back in here where we took it out earlier just plug it back in on those two prongs and you're away you go yeah that's it there you are folks that's it nothing to it all right now we're going to put our electric cover electrical cover back on our electrical box just manipulate it around until you find it in the right spot this is going to be down you'll see how that's going to line up underneath there that block that's going to be see the thing is going to be sort of up underneath there all right so you manipulate it around till you get it where it wants to be and uh you'll find it it'll fit in there eventually <laughs> There, sits this one down, and we'll be happy with that. Take your time, folks, when you're doing this. Um, I can do units like this if nobody's spelling in me or anything. I can get them done in an hour and a half. Allow yourself an afternoon, two, three, four hours to do it. Don't rush. Get it done right. Okay. Going to take this junction box. Are we ready, Robert? Yep. <laughs> and just going to cinch it back down out of the way. Just like that. Now, as you can see, we're done here. All we have to do is reinstall our, our uh, flame covers. Our draft covers, we call them. One on the side here. One on the bottom. One on the front. 
Use the same screws that you took them off with, put them back in. Then we're going to stand the fridge up and we're going to do our inside attachment of our freezer plate and freezer bolts. And then we're going to be pretty well ready to put it back in the cabinet. So we're installing our bottom drip, our bottom tray here, dust uh, wind cover, a couple of screws, one over here in the side, and uh, you can use self-tapping screws if you want. You can use new screws, reuse the old ones. Doesn't matter. Um, I quite often use new screws, whatever uh, is available to you. Okay, now, take our top cover here. Now, what I do is I leave this cover off for now. It'll go back on when I'm all done because when I put the fridge back in the cabinetry and I get outside and I want to relight the fridge, I want to be able to see the flame. So if this is reattached, I won't be able to see the flame. So I leave this off and I put it on the back of the fridge after the fridge is all installed and I make sure we have a good flame. So that'll go on. We're going to reattach our little drip tray here. All it does is handle the condensation of the fridge and it gives a place for the water to come down this hose off your fins and goes into this tray and evaporates in time. That goes back on. All right, the cooling unit is now installed and if you want to take a tie wrap to wrap these wires and tie wrap them right there out of the way that'd be great you can do that I'll do that in a few minutes if you see any of these little fins here the condenser fins in shipping if they happen to get bent or damaged a little bit it doesn't hurt them they're just sheet metal just take a pair of pliers and straighten them out it has no effect on the on the working ability of the fridge but they may get hit and bent a little bit just straighten them out and you'll be fine now we're ready to stand this fridge up and assemble the inside freezing plates to the freezer. Now, make sure, check your freezer tubes for levelness. Make sure the fridge is good and level side to side, front to back. Once you've established the fridge is level, put your level in on these tubes here, freezer tubes, and make sure they're level side to side, front to back. And if they're not level side to side, front to back, they have to be adjusted before you put your freezer plate back on there. Now, if we see these freezer tubes are not level, take a pry bar, in this case I've got a crowbar, put it up in there. You're going to take and you're going to push down on these, one, some on that side, do it strongly but slowly, down on this side, remove your bar and recheck for level. You want it to be a level back and forth, front to back. And once you establish these are level, then you're ready to put your freezer plate in. Okay, we're going to reinstall our freezer plates. Now, there's old Maztec on here from the old unit. We don't have to re tech these pipes. They get so cold, you don't need Maztec there. So don't worry about it, and don't worry about the old Maztec. Leave it on there. We're going to shove this plate back in. You're going to put it on top. You have a decorative plate in the back here. You're going to get this thing lined up and... You gotta tap it in because there's you gotta get back in position there. So there, so get it about like so. Now, once you get that plate like that, you have to take your bottom plate and you have to put it up in there. Okay, and it goes under like that, and pull this back a little bit, and there, shove that in. So it sits in there like that. Then I'm gonna take the four bolts and put them through the holes and tighten it up and that's the way that system will be back together like that. Okay, the bottom plate which goes up underneath there. Have a look at it. You can see which way it was on prior. Okay, so you got your horseshoe loops down here. So it's going to go on this way. So you're going to put it up underneath there. Alright, and now there's a trick to line up those holes. Alright, there's a trick to it. And I'm going to show you the trick. What you have to do is take a, a pocket screwdriver or something small. You're going to put it down in the hole and fish around until you find one hole. So there, I found that hole. You're just going to drop one bolt in that hole. 
at, so you don't lose the positioning of that one hole. So there's that one hole. I'm dropping one bolt through. That's it. Now, go to the opposite hole. The kitty corner. Find the opposite hole over here. All right. Find that hole in the back on the opposite side. Put a bolt in there. And drop a bolt in. Once you have these two bolts in place, once you have those two bolts in place, the other two will line up automatically. Alright, so now we've got the fridge back in the cabinet. We're going to put the hold down screws back in, in the holes where we had. There was one there and there was one over here. That just prevents the fridge from popping out of the cabinet. We had two down below here. And one more, folks. Right there. And then all we have to do is, all we've got left here, folks, is we've got to reattach this capillary tube to the bracket on the fins. We'll be doing that in a few minutes. Shoving in his little shelving work back in here in his little drip tray there. And then we're just going to install the doors back on the fridge and put the eyebrow back on the top of the fridge. And then we'll be done in here with the fridge. All right, so I'm putting the slide lock back on now that we've done with moving the fridge around. So we're just going to line up our two holes. Treat this very gingerly. It's very fragile little thing. Um, they get broken a lot of times if you don't take them off and put them back on. Um, but you just get the screws lined up and put them back on where they were. Okay. So we got that screw in there. And don't over tighten it. The thing's made of plastic and you'll crack the So there, we're going to just put this slide lock back in place. We've got it there. That just helps lock your doors when they're closed. Now we're going to reinstall install our doors. Very easy to do. Take our bottom door first. And you'll see at the bottom here, there's a pin. And we're going to drop the pin, the doors back on this pin. Now this pin has three or four round washers on it. If the washers stayed there, leave them there, that means your door will be adjusted properly. If when you put the door on it, it seems to be touching or scraping the bottom, add a washer to the pin and lift the door up a little bit and it'll help it close, open and close properly. And at the bottom of the door, you'll see on the bottom end of this door, there's a plug like that. That's what goes onto that pin down there. You're just going to lift the door up and you're going to get it on that pin. And you can always have a buddy help you steer it on there. But uh, I'm going to put it around here until I get it. And then I'm going to feel for it and uh, hopefully I'll hit it. And I'm feeling. There, got it. So I'm on the pin there. The door is going to close. And now you'll see the slide this lock thing out of the way. Now I've got to put my other pin in top here. So this is a pin here. It screws in. The long end goes into the into the bottom door and it leaves the top end extending out for the top door. So just screw this in here and you can just put it in finger tight. All right, get it lined up. Screw it in there finger tight is fine. And uh, you'll be ready to uh, install your, your top door. There's that door put in. Just put that finger tight. So there's your bottom door installed and working fine. Mm -hmm. Top door. Top door is being put on. Line up the pin with the hole there. It's on. Close your door. And we're going to get our pin for up top here. We have it right here, and we're just going to screw that back in the hole there that it came out of, and that'll be your door assembly. Very easy to do. So you just screw that down by hand like so, and we now have our doors reinstalled. All we have left to do is put the eyebrow on. There we go. There. All right. So there, you check your door operation, and it's working fine. So we're reinstalling the eyebrow now. So we just plug it back in there on its prongs. Holding our thumb there. 
trying to hold our things there. That one's plugged on. This one here. Plug it on carefully. Make sure it hits all the terminals. There. My system. Oh, Alright, reinstalling our wires. Take our ignition lock wires, put it in our little wire block, shove it in there, and tighten up the screw. That's one set of wires. Alright, make sure they're in there snug and tight. There's one wire. Now, we'll hook up our ground next because we want to leave our positive for the last. So you shove your ground wire in the middle where it come out. Alright, again, tighten up the set screw. Alright. It's tight. Now, our positive wire, we've got to be careful not to touch any metal with this positive wire. Also, very important, this style of fridge, if you get the polarity wrong, if I was to put the positive on the negative side, negative on the positive side, I would destroy the circuit board inside this fridge. So, vitally important to get the polarity correct. And I know that this is the bottom one, and that's on there. Don't touch any metal with it. Screw it in tight, quickly. And there we are, our wiring hooked back up. All we have to do. All right, hook up your propane line. Again, make sure you get it lined up straight. Don't cross thread the propane line. If you can't screw this nut on by hand, it's not in the proper position. So turn it until you get it on by hand, and only then tighten it up. Once you get this nut nice and tight, you get yourself some sudsy soapy water, turn on your propane fuel, and test around this nut and fitting that you have no propane leaks. And that finishes the installation of the refrigerator.